make a start. Welcome, hope you've grabbed your cup of tea. I'm on water today. Um, my husband, if you could only trade them in. My husband's forgotten to make me my cup of Earl Grey tea for this afternoon. He's busy doing something with the cows. Um, so join me for a chat around how we might support each other through some of the key challenges that uh, as internal audit we have gone through in the last 20 weeks and continue to go through as we move into the period beyond hopefully um, COVID-19 although I'm certain travel agents would have said last Friday they were moving into beyond and then came Saturday and changes and dealing with cancellations and then Sunday apparently was all about refunding so everything is uncertain at the moment so those of you that don't know me may i just quickly introduce myself i'm liz sandwith i'm the chief professional practices advisor at the chartered institute of internal auditors uk and ireland the institute is the only professional body dedicated exclusively to training supporting and representing internal auditors in the uk and ireland we have approximately 10,000 members across all sectors of the economy and across all parts of the UK and Ireland. And members are part of a global network of 200,000 members in 170 countries, all working to the same international standards and code of ethics. So we're part of a really large family. Today's topic I want to explore with, is how to be a more agile internal auditor. So now is a critical time for internal audit to help the business with some real time support. And that's where an agile mindset comes in. An agile mindset looks at close collaboration with stakeholders and constant communication, which together amount to a more empowered internal audit function something I guess we all desire to work for. So remember, if you like Facebook streams and want to spread the word, and I'm sure you do, be sure today's live stream is one you share. You can do that by clicking the share button in the corner of your screen. The more, the merrier. The Agile Management Revolution is transforming the world of work. It took off in software development in 2001 and is now spreading rapidly under various labels to all parts and all kinds of organizations agile firms and functions within your organization are now capable of delivering instant value at scale now everything is different and if i wind my mental clock back to my days when i was head of internal audit at channel 5 I was there in 2001 and I can remember Agile being used in our software development team and post-its all over the windows and the walls and people huddling around. In those days it was a flip chart rather than a whiteboard but you get the picture. Coming up with ways of doing things, talking to people, consulting um, and everyone was invited to join these 15 minute conversations first thing in the morning. So what do we mean by being a more agile internal auditor? There are two elements, I think, to thinking about agile. The first is the agile audit methodology. And the second is how we as a, an individual can be more agile in the way we work. Firstly, I want to explore the agile audit process. What, where else would we start our thinking than at the audit planning stage? An agile audit plan, planning process involves a continuously debated, updated schedule of audits and projects prioritised by risk. So is that what you do in your internal audit function? Do you gather around a flip chart, a whiteboard with your head of internal audit, your CAE, and explore what are the priorities for the year ahead, or maybe not even that far anymore, the next six months? The next even three months. The other key element in reporting is reporting, which in an agile methodology approach is both very frequent and more informal with communications through dashboards and update memos, storyboards, 
rather than long form audit reports. And I was talking to some heads of audit, heads of internal audit recently, and they use an, a memo to support their agile methodology. Um, and at the end of each sprint, they produce this memo, share it around that highlights all of the issues that they have identified. Which means come the end of the audit, when you're sitting down thinking about the audit report, actually you're just bringing together the memos. And that means that you can get something out very fast, it's very relevant, and everyone is aware of what the issues are because they've been copied in on the, me the memos as we've, as we've gone through the process. So the main difference between agile and traditional auditing is often that the inflexible early stage planning is replaced by iterative planning and a series of sprints incorporating short bursts of activity covering planning and testing. Typically, the eight weeks or so spent on planning, fieldwork and reporting are replaced with, say, three agile phrase, phases, totaling perhaps six weeks or even less. And that is what our stakeholders are looking for. Something much more um, relevant, much prompter, much more prompt um, in terms of providing that assurance. So agile auditing is built around a flattened structure with empowered job roles. So do you, as my colleagues on the call, um, feel empowered? Are you a, an empowered internal auditor? Teams can decide to continue on a project track or change direction based on experience gained during the audit process. The framework applies to all internal auditors, whatever their level. So for example, realignment can be made by more junior auditors as senior auditors team leaders will have set appropriate guidelines during the planning phases. A more responsive internal audit approach can deliver the value that senior management needs. And that isn't just the management of the organisation, but it's also your audit committee and other key stakeholders, perhaps even a regulator. Small audit teams typically apply a number of these agile auditing principles already. And I think if you sit now and think and reflect um, about your audit team, I'm sure there will be things there that you are already doing that perhaps you hadn't seen as being an agile framework or an agile methodology. And many large teams have introduced a bespoke methodology that works for them. So it's not necessarily one size fits all. It's about exploring what works best for you. And don't forget, in our new world is, is what's important. So testing priorities are reassessed and redirected as priorities evolve. The audit team review priorities, testing and goals. Major weaknesses are surfaced as they arise. So actions can be scheduled quickly. Audit teams can be more adaptive. Isn't that what our stakeholders are crying out for from internal audit? And for me, those few words sum up what internal audit needs to be as we move forward through the 2020 decade. We need to be able to reschedule. We need to be more adaptive. And we need to respond more quickly to the demands of our stakeholders. Agile um, assurance given in real time over risks that are currently, rather than historically, critical or important is consistent with sticking to internal audits existing change agenda for data mining and analytics. But other important matters need to be managed carefully. A key one is ensuring that internal audit can demonstrate its independence and objectivity as it increasingly adopts agile practices. And I was talking to someone only this week that was talking about a program of secondment for internal auditors into the business to learn and understand better how the business functions, learning the lessons from being redeployed into first line over the last 20 weeks. So thinking about what we can take with us from the last 20 weeks into the future. 
and a very senior head of internal audit recently coined the phrase bottle, bottling what we have learnt so that we preserve it and carry it forward into the future. We also need to recognise that the need for an increased focus on the weaknesses of certain uh, controls, which may provide an opportunity to, for people to work around the controls in different circumstances. So we need to recognise that. Potentially, this may have fraud risk implications. Management's detective controls over fraud prevention may be rendered less effective as their operation becomes more remote, working from home in effect. Changes in the human face-to-face -face element of auditing will reduce the ease of spotting certain red flags of fraud, weak culture and ethics. And again, a head of audit was telling me um, that their organisation is in, in, has been, over the last 20 weeks, been making grant payments under government initiatives. And she said the organisation is appearing in the top three for prompt payment, which raised a red flag with her as internal audit because she knew the organisation wasn't that good. So her immediate concern was, what controls perhaps have we circumvented, missed, or not applied appropriately. So sometimes appearing to be good isn't necessarily everything that it appears to be. It may be a red flag. So just to remind you again, some of you that are just joining us, welcome to our live stream, Talk to Internal Audit. Today's theme is about being a more agile internal auditor. As I said earlier, now is a critical time for internal audit to help the business with real-time support. And that's where an agile mindset comes in. It looks at close collaboration with stakeholders and constant communication, which together amount to a more empowered internal audit function. If we now turn to think about agile as an individual in the way we work, perhaps, we might say that we have an agile mindset. So what might that look like? Might we suggest it's a set of attitudes which include respect, collaboration, improvement, and learning cycles, pride in ownership, focusing on delivering value, and the ability to adapt to change. If we agree that this is what we mean, let's think a moment. Is that what we mean? Might we suggest that such a mindset is necessary to cultivate high-performing internal audit teams who in turn deliver amazing value for their customers? I think that's exactly what we mean when we talk about being agile of mind as individuals in our internal audit function. At this junction, I would like to invite anyone watching to feedback on examples of how you personally have adapted your working environment to be more agile. Sharing in this new normal world is essential. So share with me and your colleagues agile tips you've discovered in the last 20 weeks by leaving a comment in this live stream with any useful examples you can think of. So think about how you scheduled your working day. Perhaps you are caring for shielding relatives, perhaps you are homeschooling, perhaps you are supporting other family members, um, and also delivering internal audit for your organisation, looking at new risks, emerging risks, risks that perhaps weren't perceived to be significant, but where the significance of the risk and the impact on your organisation is growing. Think about revenue revenue generation, loss of revenue, cost savings, all of those sorts of things. Alternatively, if you can't think of any useful examples, perhaps you could respond to our poll, which I'm just about to put on the screen. So, would you describe yourself as a, an agile internal auditor? There's always a minute or two delay in Facebook with the poll coming up. So would you describe yourself as an agile internal auditor? Yes? No? Not sure? 
please respond. It's always good to hear and see what people have to say. By aligning mindset and process, agile internal audit frameworks, direct time and effort towards the issues, challenges and risks that most affect the organization's ability to implement strategy and achieve goals. At the same time, it aims to conduct routine assurance activities without unnecessary resources, efforts or reports. I'm going to show you the results of the poll. It also will take a minute or two and we'll see how they come. By streamlining the work and documentation, being agile focuses internal audit's attention on the trends, risks, challenges and opportunities that can most impact the organisation and drive insights. One of the things that I have learnt over the last 20 weeks is I don't need a paper diary. I can't tell you how many years I have commuted around the country and around the globe carrying with me my paper diary. And it's a big one because I like each day to have its own page. I have realised I don't need that. So if I ever get to commute again, who knows, then I won't be taking my paper diary with me. I've just got to master the not having paper, not printing things off, because I do like to write on things. So I need to change the way I work. I need to be more agile in my thinking in terms of making best use of resources, effort, uh, and how I do things. So I'm sure we all have things if we stop and think that we could do differently, better, smarter, cleverer. Agile is a buzzword that too often just signifies fast, and that's not what we're talking about. And our present use doesn't encompass what the word truly means if we're only thinking of it as fast or its potential for improving audit. Agile actually means an action that is nimble, limber, spirited, sharp, active, clever, acute, great group of words. An internal auditor and department that encompasses these qualities will be better able to anticipate and respond effectively to changing business risk profiles than one that is simply fast. Being fast isn't good enough, is it? We need to have all of these other skills as well. Can you imagine working in an internal audit team and hopefully some of you are on the call this afternoon actually are sitting there going, yes, absolutely, that's my internal audit team. Because businesses are moving and changing and responding very fast at the moment. Remember the travel industry I spoke about earlier, last Friday, then Saturday, then Sunday, the world shifted very fast. We need to be able to respond equally as fast as internal audit, don't we? So do we think we can be relevant if we're not agile? Might I suggest probably not. And an audit department must be both. Well, at least must be relevant. And if agile helps us being more relevant, then we must be agile as well. We need in this new world to break out of our historical frame of reference. Oh, we did that audit four years ago and this. Or... Ah, well, that's an audit we always do every five years because. Break out of that historical frame of reference to embrace agility in pursuit of relevance. What is important now, today? If internal audit lacks both agility and relevance, audit may follow a prescribed routine, potentially missing emerging risks and delivering a suboptimal customer experience. And might I go as far as to suggest that an internal audit team that is neither agile nor relevant, following prescribed routine, historical frame of reference, may not be long for the organisation you work for. They will be looking for something different from their internal audit. Breaking some of uh, audit's long-standing habits will require cultivating a tolerance for ambiguity, as well as empathy, flexibility, innovation, talent and engagement. 
If all predictions about the future of work are true, skills like creativity, agility, flexibility and communication will be more valued in the potential leaders of tomorrow. So how might I, you, us, start to become more agile in the way we work? Staying flexible, open and responding in the moment. Being equally willing to lead and to follow. Listening closely to what is going on with colleagues. Have fun and try experimenting. I, I was on a call this morning and there was um, a CEO talking and he said work should be more than just somewhere you go to get paid. You should enjoy going into work and you can only do that if you have a leader who will support innovation, be willing for people in the team to fail because they're trying something new, experimenting. So let's hope that we all work for people, leaders like that. Communicate clearly with customers and colleagues, learning something new at every opportunity. When I was a little girl, my father said to me, if you don't learn something new every day, then you die. And I think that's very important. So we need to learn something new every day. I've got a few tips that we can adopt to help us to succeed in a constantly changing business environment. Respond with yes and instead of yes but when asked something. Listen deeply. Help find common ground, a starting point to add something that takes the conversation forward. So think for a moment some of those difficult conversations you've had with your customer, your client, um, at the end of an audit where you have found particularly challenging control failings. Think about how we take that conversation forward. Communicate clearly to your customers. We're making an important presentation, whether that's verbal or written, to a customer. Give them some context. Share all important information discussed so far so everyone is on the same page. Provide the rationale behind your idea and end with a clear call to action. What do they need to do based on what we have shared with them. Try new things and learn to move on quickly. Learn from your mistakes and course correct. That is the important thing. Have we recognised that we've made a mistake and have we corrected? Hopefully yes. So if you are just joining us, welcome to our live stream, Talk to Internal Audit. Today's theme is about being a more agile internal auditor. We have begun to think about that. We have thought about uh, frameworks, we've talked about uh, methodologies, but we've talked about us as individuals trying to become more agile in the way we work. Agile employees, us, respond quickly to changes and work together as a team versus individually to find the best solution for challenges or obstacles working as a team helps problem solving is no longer in today's new normal a solitary assignment working as a team paves the way for out-of-box thinking and quite often some unique approaches so finally if you were looking to recruit a new member for your internal audit team or were thinking about a future employee, employer, sorry, they might look for seven C's just as you might. So commitment to lifelong learning, curious, enjoys exploring new concepts. It was the opportunity to be curious that drew me to internal audit 32 years ago. I loved the fact that every day was different. Collaborative, energised by the team's experience and think holistically. Communicate, offer and solicit ideas and opinions. 
be a critical thinker, the ability to dissect situations and statements to get to the why. And in a couple of weeks, one of the things I want to look at is root cause, because I'm not convinced that we have really understood as internal auditors and exploited the opportunity of root cause analysis, asking the question why. Change hardy, high tolerance for ambiguity and complexity. Can-do attitude, willingness to try something that's never been done before and not be afraid of failure. When I was at school, my, my school reports always used to say Liz could do better, but they always used to say she has a superb can-do attitude. So I used to get, for effort, I used to get a great gold star for ability, maybe a bit less. So how many of those seven C's describe you? Do you agree that these are useful skills to cultivate for the future? So now as I'm coming to a close for today's session, what I want to do is a bit of future thinking. As we said, COVID-19 brings many challenges for organisations and for us as individuals. However, as I have said over these last weeks, it is a powerful game changer for us as internal auditors in terms of the way we work. COVID has provided a similar impetus for change, but far more widely. It has shaken up all sectors and all countries to a greater or lesser extent and has forced, forced organisations and their customers into new ways of operating and thinking. It is already clear that the crisis has accelerated many long-term trends, such as automation and the switch to cleaner, more environmentally friendly power. It's probably too early to see whether more people will continue to work from home or to shop in different ways in the longer term. However, it seems likely that positive experiences during the last 20 weeks and increased familiarity with digital tools will accelerate trend towards more flexible working and shopping that have been long predicted but slow to develop. I've not been able over these last 20 weeks to get uh, home delivery of shops. So we have been agile in our house and developed a man the hunter philosophy. So my husband goes out now and does the shopping. Um, a different way of working, more agile way of working. Not always sure I'm thrilled with what he brings back, but a different way of doing things to maximize everybody's um, resources so that we do everything we need to do within the time that we have. Internal auditors face a, a wide range of challenges, as I'm sure you knew. Um, yet the, the overarching theme for most of us is the need to change. An agile approach to work provides methods that work to change both the mindset of internal auditors and their work processes. So let's embrace agile in its many forms as we all prepare for the new future. So for those of you who are just tuning in, today we spoke about being a more agile internal auditor, what it means, how it helps us in the workplace, and why being more agile in a world full of change and uncertainty is the way forward. The live stream is available afterwards for those of your friends, colleagues who may have missed the live version on the Institute's Facebook channel. Follow all of the exciting things the Institute is doing on Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter. As a member, you have access to the latest edition of Audit and Risk magazine, which was published on the 2nd of July on our website. Never too late to read it if you haven't. I'm always happy to take questions via email at liz.sandwith at iia.org.uk. Next week, 6th of August, we will be exploring ESG, economic, social and governance, recognising that the coronavirus pandemic is morphing. This time it will test our abilities to manage workplace safety, in particular occupational safety. 
In this tie stream, we will take a COVID lens to environmental, social and governance issues and how they explore uh, and explore how they impact on the financial and operational performance of a business and internal audit in a pandemic or any crisis scenario. As we move forward into the new future, please don't forget to book the slot in your diary, 4pm every Thursday. Don't forget coffee, tea, water. I think also perhaps we ought to start having some cucumber sandwiches and call this our afternoon tea session. Remember, talk to Internal Audit, the Institute is listening. And I can demonstrate that because um, some of our colleagues in local government have asked the Institute to create a local government uh, virtual forum. And we have, and the first one was run yesterday. And the demand for that is increasing. And we will be holding more of those moving forward. So thank you for joining me and supporting the Institute and me in these Talk to Internal Audit sessions. Stay safe. All the best. Thank you. Thank you.